Okay, welcome to this video. This is exponential growth and decay word problems. And let's see what we got here. I've got this uh, note card to fill out class and a couple of things I want to highlight here, not in that color, but uh, we've got th four different formulas, depreciation, appreciation, compounded interest, and compounded continuously. I say four different formulas, but they're all based on one basic formula, this y equals a times b to the x, where a is the initial amount, b is a growth rate, and x is uh, a time period or a cycle of something. Okay, and so let's take a look. Depreciation. Anytime you see uh, a word problem talking about things going down in value or reducing, then it's usually going to be a depreciation. To depreciate something means to reduce its value. Okay, the typical example. Uh, for somebody who is going into the driving age is if you go buy a new car it depreciates uh, over time the value of the car gets less and less as you use it okay unless it's an antique car that might appreciate in value in other words you buy an antique car for twenty thousand dollars and two years later it might be worth twenty two thousand dollars or thirty thousand in a car auction or something um, and that's because it's it's different antiques uh, tend to go up in value once they get to a certain age because people really prize some older uh, piece of equipment or a car or something. <clears throat> the next two, compounded and compounded continuously, you're going to see that they have generally have to do with um, the financial type applications, such as this example, putting $50 in the bank, getting some interest, and we're going to see how these work. Okay, so we've got this y equals a times b to the x. In the depreciation, it's y equals a, the initial amount, times and in, in parentheses, we've got the B value, okay? So I know it doesn't have a B in it, but it's basically, this is the rate of decrease, and then raised to the time, okay? And the appreciation, the only difference is the plus, okay? So this one is A, the initial amount, times one plus R, so it's a rate of increase over time, okay? So again, I just wanted to kind of highlight that B is this growth rate. Right over here, compounded interest, a equals, and they start using different variables. This is uh, specific to the financial market. They call the initial amount a principal, uh, the principal amount that you start with. So when you put $50 in, that's my A value, if you kind of go back to the other formula. 1 plus R over N, where this R is the rate, uh, the interest rate that you get, and N is the number of times that the interest gets added to the account on an annual basis. So here they said compounded monthly so it happens 12 times per year, and that's where they're putting that. And then they use that same value for n up here times the t, which is still the number of years. So we've got 12 times per year times two years, so it's going to be 24 interest payments into this account. All right, so a little confusing, but we'll see it worked out in a word problem. <clears throat> All right, this last one, compounded continuously. Uh, so over here we had it compounded monthly. It could have been done weekly, then that would have been a 52, it could have been done daily, that would have been a 365 we would have used in there, but compounded continuously, it's almost hard to really describe, it's just all the time continuously adding the interest into the account. Um, and uh, they use this PERT formula, I like to call it, there's a shampoo called PERT, but um, here, same story as this one, $50 in the account, except for it's compounded continuously. Well, we still have an initial amount of $50, and we're going to use this E value. Well, E um, is just it's a number uh, that someone worked up uh, a couple hundred years ago, I believe, and figured out that this is a, a value that is used in uh, exponential growth and decay. And here it is, second LN gives us this little E to the X. And if you want to know what E is, raise it to the first power and hit enter. Well, there's the number. So it's not some big mystery. It's just a number that is seen in uh, natural increases and decreases um, used in the real world. Okay, so we've got initial amount $50 times E, and so we're just going to put in the E on the calculator and let it use the 2.718, blah, 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 Time, uh, raised to the rate 5% and 2 years. So let's see how these are used, because there's a lot of different formulas, and you could be really confused by now, but let's take a look. I listed the same formulas up above in a slightly different order, but I've got a uh, clown at your party, oh, oh well it's a business called my clown at your party company, produces, uh, 
purchases, purchases a van uh, to drive to parties for $20,000. Piece of the van. The value of the van depreciates. Here's the key word. It depreciates at a rate of 9% per year. So which formula am I going to use? Well, this one was a formula for interest compounded on a um, monthly or weekly or uh, quarterly basis. This one was the compounded continuously. And here's the when things are going up in value, that plus ought to be the key there for you. And this is when things are going down in value. So this is the one we're going to use. So here we got uh, y is equal to the initial amount. So we're doing the a times 1 minus r to the t power. Okay, so y equals a, $20,000 to start with. $20,000 uh, times 1 minus the rate. 0.09. I want you to notice that I changed that percent into a decimal. Okay, so 0.09 raised to the t. They want to know what it's going to be worth after eight years. So eight went right there. All right, and now we're going to do it with a calculator, and it's really as easy as that. Uh, these things aren't hard. It's probably just figuring out which formula to use and uh, going from there. So 20,000 parentheses, 1 minus 0.09. 09, close those parentheses, and raise it to the 8th power. $9,405. Is this past the common sense test? A $20,000 van after 8 years only being worth $9,405? Yes. I say it does. 8 years of use, it's not going to be worth near as much. In fact, maybe you can go a little lower than that. Go on on the next one. Now, you may want to pause this and try one on your own. See if you can figure out which formula and then check and see if your work is correct. House is purchased, uh, the value of the home increases, so here we go. It's an appreciation formula. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it right out from there. It was $150,000 to start with, and one plus the interest rate. This time I'm going to leave the little percent symbol in there. Whoops, I didn't mean to do it that way. Thinking about that other formula. So this is one plus three percent. And I'm going to leave that in there. I want to show you how the calculator will work with that as well. Um, and how much is going to be worth in 2025? Well, it's not 2025 here. It's 2025 as compared to 2012. So I'm just going to do a little subtraction and find out that there's 13 years of difference there. So it's basically asking, like, hey, in 13 years, what's it? Going to, what is it going to be worth? All right, looking at the calculator, move it over to this side. Um, Clear that. I got a hundred fifty thousand dollar home times one plus three. I told you I was going to do this a little different. Second and the percent symbol. So second percent, second percent allows me to just put that percentage in there and let the calculator do the movement of the decimals. So after thirteen years, this house has gone up to two hundred and twenty. Thousand two hundred and eighty dollars and some change. Okay, so 220, 280. 220, 280, and some change. Okay. All right, let's move right along. Keep this thing going. Again, pause it here. See if you can figure out which formula. Pause it after you get the right formula. Then see if you do the work correct. You deposit this amount in the account. Anytime I start talking about money in accounts, you know it's probably this one or this one. And the next thing is, is look at the word compounded. That's how often they put the money, the interest into the account. Compounded monthly. Well, this one was the compounded continuously. This is the one we need to use. All right. So it looks like a complicated formula. Not too bad. The P there is the principal amount, the initial amount, 100,000, one plus the rate, 7.5%. You can either do it like this on the calculator or put 0.075 divided by n. n is the number of times that it's compounded in a year. And if they're doing it monthly, well, we all know that there are 12 months in a year. And then we got that times nt, so we got 12 used again, and then times the number of years, so 10. All righty. So let me find my, oh, there it is. On my calculator over here and clear that out. We got a hundred thousand dollars in the account. Big money. Hundred thousand dollars. One plus point oh seven five. I'm gonna use that this time. 
over 12, but I could have been in 7.5 and hit the percent key. I'm going to move out of that fraction, close those parentheses, raise it to the 12 times 10. Sorry, move that over. 12 times 10. Could I have just put 120 there? Yes. All right, so this deposit is now $211. 211,206 and 46 cents. All right, so at the bank, if I go and withdraw my money after those 10 years, I'm going to pull out this much money. Sounds like a pretty good deal. Just can't spend the money for 10 years. All right, it's a pretty good interest rate, too. All right, let's go on to the next to the last one. George Washington, wooden teeth are decaying rapidly. He's been dead for many years. His teeth are decaying. P in grams is the weight of the tooth after T years and can be modeled by this equation. Okay, so if they give you an equation, you know what? These things, you can just forget about them. If they give you an equation, just use what they have and fill in the variable that they are uh, telling you and calculate it for the one they're asking about. So they're asking, like, how much is it going to weigh? So this is the one they're asking for, and they're telling us after 225 years, so we're going to put that in for T. So this is probably just a variation of this one right here. Whoops, no, it's not. It's this one. It's a decay, so it's 1 minus something, so it's decreasing at a rate of 0.02% or 0.02 or 2%. But anyway, let's go straight to the calculator. And my point in showing this one is just that if they give you a formula, you're just trying to figure out what you need to plug in and calculate the other variable. So 3.2 parentheses 0.98, close it, raise it to the 225 power. 225 years later, it's 0 0.0339. I'll go with 0 0 0.03, 0.03 grams. Basically, there's hardly any noticeable trace of his teeth at this point. All right, final one. Pause it here, see if you can do it. Deposit in an account, okay, and it's compounded continuously. All right, so we are going to go with the PERT formula. So A equals the principal amount, 43,128, times that E value that we're going to get straight from the calculator and let it put it in there at an interest rate of 2.5% times the number of years, 12. Go straight to the calculator. Clear that four three one two eight uh, times e. I didn't have to put the times in there, but I'm doing second the natural log thing, and uh, that looks like n, but it's ln, and it's e to the. And see how they're giving me that? I'm going to go 0.025. I could have put in 2.5 and hit the percent key times 12, and it tells me that can't remember what the question was. That much money, hey, I started with 43,000, I'm at 58,216. 58,216.7, I can't remember now. Uh, 71. That's how much money I'm gonna have here if it's compounded continuously after 12 years. Okay, have fun with this stuff and do good on that test.